Welcome back to another interview at the AAAS meeting in Washington, D.C. This afternoon, we're talking to Dr. Larry Madoff. Larry's an expert on infectious disease. He's done a lot of work in this field. But we're going to talk to him today about his role as editor of ProMed. What is ProMed? ProMed is the program for monitoring emerging diseases. It is a um, network of um, individuals around the world who are um, interested and concerned about emerging infectious diseases, um, not only of humans, but of animals and, and plants as well, and their impact on, on the human world. Um, there are about 55,000 people who participate in ProMed. There's a staff of uh, a little over 40 people located basically everywhere in the world, as are our readers and uh, we communicate about emerging disease outbreaks. This is a great example about the internet and social networking where a small group of people can aggregate some critical information from a larger source and really have an impact on people around the globe. We um, began in 1994, really um, in the early, early dark ages of the internet when relatively few people were using the internet, certainly few people outside of the developed world. And um, ProMed began with 40 subscribers, 40 users, and uh, grew virally, essentially, um, it was steadily and um, through, through no particular um, efforts on our part to, to the, where we are today with over 55,000 people and virtually every country in the world represented. Um, it, has, it is in many aspects an early example of social media. It's a list serve. We, people email each other and um, those emails become um, public to all of the other participants in, in the group. Our system is, uh, is moderated, that is, all of, the, all of the emails that go out, all of the posts that go up on our website or on our Facebook page or our Twitter feeds are um, moderated by an expert. So it's not just a chance for anybody to say anything they want anytime. All of our reports are vetted to some extent. Um, they have some commentary, some um, context provided and some effort to put um, events into a thread of other similar events. One of the striking parts of ProMed is that it, it represents this one health concept. That is, you don't only speak about human disease, you speak about outbreaks of animal disease that could impact human disease as well. Absolutely. Um, we can't um, ignore the animal health. We know that um, more than half of human diseases are shared with animals. Half of the pathogens that infect people also infect um, animal species. And uh, in fact, um, the, more, um, the more species a pathogen can infect, the more likely that it is to emerge as an infectious disease problem. So for ProMed to serve its role as a, um, a predictor, an early warning system, for emerging infectious diseases, we absolutely have to monitor um, zoonotic diseases and animal diseases. Uh, we couldn't do our job without doing that. It's been integral to ProMed since its inception, and uh, it's really part of who we are. Um, about a third of our staff are veterinary health specialists, and that's reflected in the diseases that we cover and in the perspective that we have on those diseases. You know, one of the challenges with dissemination of epidemiology information across borders is that there are times countries don't want other people to know what's going on in that country because it could affect their economy. Have you had some negative backlash at all to your efforts? Well, we don't view it as negative backlash. There are people who do, are doing their jobs. I mean, it's the job of official public health to report things when they're confirmed, when they're known, when um, it's safe to disseminate the information. Um, our job is to be an early warning system. And so we don't necessarily wait for a disease outbreak to be confirmed or to be validated by official sources. We want to get the word out there early. And so we, we do our best to do that. We really um, promote transparency. Often our reports give the official sector permission 
if you will, to um, report an outbreak because if it's already out there on ProMed, why do they need to keep it a secret? Why do they need to, to be private about it? There are many valid reasons for um, governments, for um, regions to not want to talk about infectious diseases that are occurring in their region. It can be um, bad for tourism, bad for trade, um, just bad press in general. Um, and yet it's essential that people do know about disease outbreaks. Diseases don't respect boundaries and so um, a disease that's occurring anywhere in the world can be at your doorstep in the morning. So where will ProMed be in the near future? What, what are the next steps that are going to help you move it to the next level of combating infectious disease? Well, we make extensive use of the internet, as you know, and the internet is not as easily or, or freely available in some parts of the world um, as in others. And so one of the things that we've tried to do to help um, balance our coverage is to grow regional networks in areas of the world where there's relatively um, little internet access or, or relatively little freedom of information. And so we've tried to grow these regional networks both to help improve and foster communications within the regions across country borders that are nearby and, and even within a country, um, and also to improve the flow of information in and out of these areas so that they know about outbreaks in the rest of the world and the rest of the world knows about outbreaks in these regions that are relatively underserved. Well, it's wonderful to hear about how development in one technology, in this case the computational sphere, has a great impact on infectious disease. And you, you have to argue that the internet's really affected us all in so many profound ways. It has. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Stan. Thanks for inviting me.